Hi everyone, this is CY once again. Thanks for joining uh, me today. Um, today I, I will be doing a simple unboxing about the GF64E. I, I know it has been uh, unboxed many, many times over YouTube or in, in any other social media, but I'm still going to do it because uh, we have been supporting the GF64 um, grinder since the beginning. And uh, we have had, we have, um, we have been selling this grinder for quite a while now. And so far, the customer feedbacks are all pretty good. Uh, it is a grinder that's um, redesigned from DS64. And uh, I will say the refinement is, uh, it's, uh, you can see uh, later when I unbox this uh, grinder. And uh, it has been improved from the DS64. But of course, there's some downside uh, to this grinder. And uh, without further ado, let's just unbox this uh, grinder. And let's see how the grinder looks like. And this is the white color version. Uh, I have the black color version, uh, but uh, today I'm just going to unbox the white color. Right? So without further ado, let's do that. And by the way, um, our DS64 come with uh, DLC burst, not the stock Titanium burst. So it will be slightly more expensive as compared to the other models we ship with Titanium. Uh, DLC uh, stands for uh, uh, diamond like carbon. Right? So uh, it is a uh, uh, a pearl whereby it's hardened. It's a, it's a hardened steel, a lot harder than the standard Itamio. And uh, according to specs, it's uh, supposed to grind about 3,000 kilograms of coffee before the pearls need to be replaced, right? So let's open this and take, let's take a look. Um, as a standard DS64, it comes with uh, two boxes, the outer box and inner box. The packaging looks a little bit smaller as compared to the DS64. Um, I guess the this 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 grinder is to me it looks slightly smaller. All right, let's look at the uh, the specs of the grinder. Ah, uh, you can see the net weight of the grinder is only six point eight kg, six point seven kg, and the gross weight is seven point eight. So the packaging material takes about one kg. Uh, yeah, it's an espresso coffee grinder, right? Uh, yep, the grinder capacity is 225 because now it comes with a hopper and the bellow, you know, the single dose bellow can actually contain about 50 grams of coffee. All right, so let's unbox this, take a look at the grinder that's inside. So let's take out the grind. As usual, it comes with a instruction manual. Ooh. Okay, um, it is the packaging is slightly lopsided because one side is where the grinder is. And the other side is where the um, hopper is. So if you're opening this grinder, be careful. Like it just drop out of the packaging material. But luckily, I have a cushion at the bottom. So, um, yep. So this is the white color model. Let's take out all the accessories. Standard dosing cup. Uh, Allen key. Okay, comes with Allen key now. Bello. Right, I think it's similar to a DS64E. Right, that's the short version. Yeah, now it's slightly shorter. Uh, comes with a hopper. Comes with a collar, right, to extend your dosing cup right um, next to the chute so that it doesn't uh, fly all over the place when you grind coffee. Right, and uh, let me see, is there anything else? Let me place the grinder upright. And put this aside. Okay, so that's about so that's about it. Ah, there's a brush. There's also a brush that comes with it. Right, so let's uh, take a closer look at this grinder. Uh, for the Singapore version, it comes with UK three pin plug. Right, this is the white version. Looks quite premium because now it has got the uh, walnut 
cover as well as the um, now the shoulder uh, because now the adjustment is no longer at this position now the adjustment is at the bottom here so you can see this is how you adjust the um, grind grind size at the moment uh, of course the table has been switched to the side uh, I'm not too sure whether this is um, a wise choice. I, I think I still prefer to uh, for the table to come up from the bottom. However, they do switch the uh, you know the position of the or not switch to the side. Uh, that's um, probably okay because I have really gotten used to switching off right at the bottom here, right below the shoot. So it doesn't really bother me, right? And the adjustment, the grind indicator sticker is now placed over here. And you can see that now the range is only limited to about, I would say, um, about 100, maybe about 120 degrees or less than that. And of course, this grinding range is only for espresso, and you can no longer do a multi purpose grind on the BF64E, right? And so, this is an espresso dedicated grinder. Okay, let's take out the grinder and see what's the bird that's inside, and I'll bring along um, the uh, Itamil to compare the burrs that comes with uh, my machine, which is a DLC burr, as compared to the Itamil, right? Okay, let me get another LMT because this is too short. I think this is too. I, I guess we have to use this one for now. Uh, just two Allen, um, just two um, screws, right? And you can actually remove the uh, the burrs. So the screw is, uh, I believe, probably is M six. Right, just two screws, right? And I believe the top is removed. Ah, so you can see this bird is different. DLC. Okay, let me bring another Itamil so that you can see the difference there, right? Right, so this is the Itamil. And this is the DLC. Mm. I was saying that the DLC bird is a lot better finish as compared to the Tamil. Right? Yeah, it, it, it feels different too, right? Um, this one is, um, I, think, I believe it's sharper and more blunt. Whereas the DLC bird, it feels um, smoother. Right, so I think the seasoning on the DLC bird will be faster. Uh, and I don't know, so we have to grind and see how it goes. So, this is the stock Itamil, this is the DLC. Right, so it's really cool, right? So, and to take out the lower bird, uh, basically the same, there are three screws there, which is similar uh, to the uh, F64. And I would say uh, the tolerance inside is a lot tighter. I can see the space inside, there's no more empty spaces here, which uh, allows the coffee to be trapped. Now you can see this is um, covered by a steel, uh, a steel ring here. And I believe the steel ring has got four screws. And then uh, uh, this is the two screws that secure the topper. And I believe now the grind adjustment is done by pushing lower burr up rather than pushing the upper burr down, right? So previously you have to adjust here because the ground the, 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 the screw track is along here, whereby by adjusting the screw track, you are actually adjusting the height of the uh the, the height differences between the gap difference between the two burr set. So now the top is fixed, the lower one is the one that right. Yep, so let's see. Yes, you can see there's a slight movement there. I'm not too sure whether this can be seen on the camera. Okay, so basically it's a very simple one. Uh, let's fix back the, the burr and then we can start grinding, right?
put it back. It's actually very simple. Make sure that the two screw holes align. And you're good to go, right? Okay, there is two indentation here to, uh, for you to place the two uh, screws here so that the two screws can be can actually be uh, placed underneath these two screws here, right? So make sure you got that correct before you screw back the, the top collar, right? So I would say that now, uh, even though you have to use the screw to take out the uh, to service your burst, but I think it's less finicky as uh, compared to DF64. Because DF64, you really have to be careful when you unscrew the top collar. Um, I have got many customers who actually cross threaded their uh, burst, uh, and their, 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 you know, cross threaded their, uh, their threads, which allow them to adjust the grind setting. Um, and because of the cross threading, uh, the entire top collar has to be destroyed and taken out. And, um, it's not 100% guaranteed that it can be repaired, right? So now uh, you can see it's already been um, placed back. It's been less than a minute, right? And this is the top, right? And you have yourself a single dose grinder and it's capable of switching over to a hopper. Right? So if you want to, uh, if you want to single dose, you can also put the hopper on. But of course, if you hopper on, you can't really blow out. So this is more for, let's say, uh, if you are not going to change your coffee very often, right, and uh, the hopper comes in handy, right? And because of the electronic dosing, right, a hopper kind of makes sense, right? Right, for now, we are, we are not going to use the hopper, right? We're just going to use the uh, single dose, right? Let me unplug this. Right, let's uh, turn on the power and see how it goes. Right, so the power is now on. This is a manual button. Right, when you touch it, right, the grinder will just go on continuously. Touch it again to stop. Right, and of course you have the double shot timer and the single shot timer here. Double shot is preset at 10 seconds. I believe this can be adjusted. Just hold down, let me try. Ah, when you hold it down, you can actually adjust the grind time, right? It's, uh, the time adjustment is by 0.1 of a second, right? So hold. Yep, when the number flash, that's when you can adjust the time, right? And you touch the hand button here, which is the manual button here to uh, set in the time that you have set, right? So you have a, a double shot timer and a single shot timer, right? This can be adjusted the same style, right? So let me get my uh, my cover. I, I'm not going to use this one cover. I'm going to use the cover designed by Thomas. So let right. me, this is the new um, sort of a cover blower design um, from Thomas, right? My good friend. So I uh, like really another one of my friends who really like to tinker and design so this is his design so you can use the bellow right to fit in so now the bellow uh let me see yeah it's the same here so this will be inserted here right it should fit really nicely Right, and once it's seated in, you do not have to remove this ever again. Right, and that's it. So you have a top loader. And you can, you can bellow, right? The hole is big enough and it's not too big, it's not too small. Whereby your entire arm, uh, palm can actually close it and you can actually feel the gas coming out, right? Uh, in the next video, I'll be opening up the grinder and see what's the clumper that's inside there, right? But there will be another video, another time. Right, so now let's look at the grind uh, from this coffee grinder, DF64. Even so, I've got some bins over, and I'm gonna recycle my dosing cup because uh, they are all the same. But uh, this is slightly different from the DF83. Right, I think. Um, oh, they are exactly the same. Okay, they are exactly the same. Right, my bad. Right, so basically, um, they. 
closing collar from a BF83, it is the same as the one on the BF64E, right? So now they have also placed um, the, the sleeve on both top and bottom. Right, and you just have to put this on top to those of course. But personally, uh, this is not what I like. I still prefer my um, dosing cup adapter. Right, so let me see whether my dosing cup adapter will fit. Right, because I just have to put it on and I don't have to care about it anymore, right? Okay, so let's see whether this will be better as compared to um, the straight one with the collar, right? So let's throw some coffee. Okay, this is the coffee from Indonesia, Indonesia Gayo, right? Um, which I roasted slightly over medium, medium dark. You can see that the oil um, is coming out slightly, right? Just a little bit of oil, right? So this is uh, what I use for milk based drink or um, dark uh, cold brew. Let's dose 18 gram and see how it goes. Eighteen point one. So let's see how it goes. Right. This is the first time that this grinder has ever grinded any beans. So I presume that there will be a little bit of retention at the start. So the difference between this and this cover is this cover you have to remove it all the time. Whereby this one you just have to load it. Right. Then put your cup on top. Okay, let me lower the camera and show you how the grind is. Right. right so let's. It on. I'm going to use the manual button. Okay, so there's a little bit of static, but let's find out the, what's the retention on the grinder. Seventeen point four for the first try, which is not too bad, right? There's about point seven grams of coffee that's trapped inside there. Right, uh, and of course, there's a lot of gaps. Uh, there's some gaps and holes for the coffee to fill, but generally, I would say for the first grind, 0.6 to 0.7 gram is pretty good. Right, uh, I will try to. Okay, this is uh, the grind setting of about 30, 32. So let me fill the coffee, right? The, 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 the grind, uh, the grind quality, right? Um, I would say this will be a little bit too coarse for espresso. Right, I can feel the graininess there. But the grind is very uniform. Um, without W, uh, without RDT, right? The coffee ground is kind of is quite fluffy. There's not much of clumping here, right? And you can see the moment that the manual button is switched on, the coffee just come out directly. So the clumper apparently is working quite well. Let me get a brush to clean up this. So I'll get a pin brush just like this, you know, just to dust off all the coffee. All right, so what's going to happen is I'm going to grind another 18 grams and then let's see whether the retention actually improves this time, right? I'm going to put the uh, grinded coffee over here so that you can take a look. Right, so you can see um it is pretty uniform. Right, coffee smells really good. 
Right, let's try another 80 grams and see how it goes. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to get a spoon, right? Eighteen gram exactly. Right, I think uh, not too sure whether you can see on the camera. Eighteen gram. And by the way, I've switched uh, my, I've cleared up my roasting space, and now I have changed this to uh, a place whereby I can unbox all my coffee equipment, and as well as uh, doing some simple, uh, some uh, espresso machine repair or grinder repair. Right, so this, this gives me a large, a bigger space for me to work. Okay, now before further ado, let's uh, grind some coffee. So you can see the loading is very simple. You have to drop the bean slowly, right, because the hole is not designed to be very big and deep. Um, the purpose of, uh, the reason for that design is because, of course, you want your whole palm to be able to cover the hole. Um, Thomas has experimented with a slightly larger hole, right? But somehow, uh, the uh, air escaped, so uh, uh, the bellow effect is not as good as the current one, right? So let's just run coffee. So take a look at how the coffee comes out. I'm going to zoom in for you, right? Right, it takes about 25 seconds to finish grinding and to bellow. Right, you can see that there's quite a bit of coffee, um, you know, coffee uh, powder all over the place due to the static. Right, you can see that the retention has improved slightly. Now it's 17.7. .7, right, uh, the retention now is reduced to 0.3 grams. So I believe that this retention will actually get better and better, which means that the retention level will get smaller. Right, as we continue to use the grinder. So apparently that in, out of the box, um, the user experience of the DF64E is very positive, at least for now. The only, the only um, you know, uh, how do I say, the only, um, I would say the continual um, problem that the DF64 series kind of grinder has is of course the static problem, right? You can see the static is still quite bad on the grinder, but um, of course, you can use RDP to actually solve this issue, but uh, I will I will recommend you not to use a spray a spray bottle or squirt bottle because that actually introduces too much water, and I've seen my customers, you know, Itamio Burset, uh, get oxidized and started rusting away because they use too much water in the RDP. So I will recommend using a slightly different method, which is the chop stick method, right? So if you follow my Instagram or my um, short video on YouTube. Right, recently I did a, a, a one video on my workflow on using a chopstick and some water to actually stir the beans. Uh, that will reduce static drastically. Um, must it be chopstick? I think chopstick is rounder, so it gives you. Um, let me try with maybe a spoon and let's see how it goes. Right, so let's grind one more time and see whether I can actually remove the static. Okay, so I've uh, just measured another 18 grams of coffee and I get a cup of water. Right, just plain water, and I'm going to use spoon because I do not have chopstick in my uh, in my showroom. So what what's going to do what I'm what I'm going to do now uh, is um which is different from what I've done just now is I didn't introduce the RDP method. So you can see now the coffee grinder is kind of uh, covered with coffee powder. So let me use my brush to clean off the grinder. So you can see now uh, it is pretty dirty. Right, you can see all the coffee ground uh, that's stuck. That's uh, being attracted to the body. 
So now let me do a little bit thing up. Now that's a good thing about having this mat at the bottom. Right? Be careful not to brush the coffee powder into this uh, grind adjustment area. Right? Because I think that would be a headache to open for normal end user. So try to get it away from this part here, right? Okay, so now it is really clean, right? So there's no more coffee ground. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my spoon, dip the spoon into water, and I'm going to stir. Right, I'm going to do it two times, right? Okay, so that's all. And now let's see the effect of um, just a little bit of water and not too much. Right, and we're going to test the retention again for the third time, right? So take a look. I'm going to zoom in for you. All right, so let's start. Right, okay, let me bring you closer to see the retention first. Right, I dose 18 grams. Now I'm getting 18 grams exactly. Right, and that shows that the, the clumper on the DS64 is working properly. Uh, next, I would like to comment about my spoon RDG method. Apparently, the spoon method is not as good as the uh, chopstick method because I believe uh, with chopstick, I'm able to get slightly a little bit more water onto the surface of the chopstick as compared to the spoon, right? So I'm going to get chopstick and test this again the next time, right? So um, I would say that the static issue is reduced slightly, but not entirely, right? I'm, I'm hoping to um, test different way other than using the script bottle, right? To, as the RBT method to reduce the static issue, right? Right, so on the whole, I hope you have uh, enjoyed today's video, right? Um, it's a little bit lengthy, right? Because I try to cover all the aspects I know about this grinder as compared to the old DF64. And uh, it's like really using the DF64 uh, since the beginning. And uh, yep, um, grinder seems to be working quite well out of the box. Right? It is no longer the same as the old DF64 whereby uh, you really need to do a lot of DIY modification to it. It seems that now it works right out of the box. Of course, the only downside is it is now only uh, it is now uh, made to be the espresso dedicated grinder, right? Uh, I'm not too sure whether this is the downside. I would say that maybe this is the good, good side as well, because normally um, a multi-purpose grinder you always have problem, um, you know, um, when you adjust from core to fine, uh, sometimes the beam gets stuck, you know, uh, and the old uh, that's 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 with the old DS64, right? But now uh, with this DS64 E, right, it is only espresso dedicated, right? So I'm not too sure whether the E stands for espresso or electronic version, right? Of course, we're going to review another version very soon, which is the DS64 uh, without the, uh, the, the, the counter and the touchscreen model. So there will be another video coming up very soon. Uh, and I have got quite a few machines to introduce, right? Uh, I would like to introduce the next in my in my next few videos, I'm going to introduce the Quick Mail 0820, right? That is actually a, uh, one of my, uh, I, I fall in love with the look of the grinder uh, the first sight, right? This is small, compact, uh, beautiful, it's retro, and there are so many different colors available, right? And, uh, simple, a simple machine, simple to use. Uh, if you're just making one or two cups of coffee a day, I think that's a great machine to use, right? But of course, with no PID, right? Which means you need to know what you're doing. But uh, if you have been making coffee for, for quite some time, uh, the ability to control temperature should not be too much of a problem. Uh, and anyway, um, yeah, so I think that's all for me today. Uh, this is Siwai once again. Thanks for joining me today. Right. Uh, right. This is DS64E, and uh, I hope you have enjoyed today's video.
uh, like my video, do remember uh, to consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done so, and like my videos, and share this video with uh, uh, your friends who are fellow health coffee lovers.